Hi students, I'm gonna go ahead and work out these problems for you. I'm trying not to move this sheet too much. Um, we did the first one in class. The second one says how much is one third of six sevenths and they say visually just display with an array. We know that of represents times and we can choose this to do um, in one of two ways. You can depict one third first and then divide it into the sevenths afterward or depict six sevenths and divide it into one third. I'm gonna go ahead and do my six sevenths first. So I'm gonna divide this into sevenths. So I have my sevens and I'm gonna shade six of those. Then I'm going to take this and divide it into thirds horizontally. So I have rows. Of these, I need to shade one of those three rows, and I'm going to shade it in an opposite direction. And I look for my area of overlap. One third of the six sevens comprises of one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of what? Six of 21 little rectangles all together. That would be fine. Of course, we could reduce that as well to a two sevenths, but you should accept that, um, especially when you're initially teaching because the focus is not reducing fractions, but just finding the overall product. The second one, we have this multiplication problem. We see from the get-go that both lots are the same exact size. We're told that we're converting in community A, two-thirds of their lot to a playground, and three-fourths of that are blacktop. In community B, they are converting three-fourths of the lot to a playground, and of that, two-thirds will be blacktop. So the order's reversed for both of these. So we have lot A and then lot B. The size is the same of each lot. So we'll go ahead and depict this with a similarly sized rectangle. But we know that lot B has a bigger playground. How do we know that? Because three-fourths of their lot is playground, whereas two-thirds of lot A's is playground. So that's the first thing that we de depict. We divide lot A into thirds, and we know that two thirds of that are playground. This playground is going to be divided into two parts. A portion will be black topped and a portion will be grass. Before we do that, we'll go ahead and just depict what lot B looks like in terms of the amount of space that the playground occupies. And here's lot B's, three fourths. Now we know that in lot A, three fourths of this uh, two thirds will be black topped. So we're gonna go ahead and split this into fourths. And we know that three-fourths of it will be black top. So you notice that I shaded one, two, three of those rows across. And I now have six rectangles out of a total 12 shaded in. That will be my black top. The leftover amount, the two-twelfths, that will be my grass because the playground, which was initially just two thirds, is a combination of a blacktop area and grass. We don't care about that leftover at all. We have no idea what they're doing there. In lot B, of this three fourths, two thirds will be blacktop. So we split into thirds this direction and we will shade two of those rows. So I shaded this row and that row. Again, six twelfths will be blacktop. And then the leftover will be grass. So three twelfths will be grass. So lot B has more grass than lot A, but they both have the same area blacktop. Number four says visually depict four divided by one fourth using an area model. So if we drew four bars, each representing a hole or a unit, and then we took those four bars and we divided them into fourths, we see that we have each individual now partitioned into four, and we have that happening four times. So you can fit a total of 16 little fourths into all four of those, so the answer is 16, and students will be able to visually see that. Now we're asked to visually depict three-fifths divided by one-half, and we are told to be sure that we transform to common denominators. Well, the common denominator for five and two would be 10, so we'll change three-fifths to six-tenths, 
and one half to five tenths. And we need to depict six tenths firstly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just split this into fifths and then cut it in half. And I need to shade in six of these. But remember that we are trying to find out how many five tenths fit. These are all in the size of a tenth, but we're counting in terms of five. How many five tenths fit inside six tenths? Well, one, two, three, four, five. When every time that you count up five total, so these five here, that's one. Okay, one five tenth has fit in there fully. You have just one left over. Well, you're counting in terms of fives, so you'll put the five in the bottom. One and one fifth is the answer here. Okay, now we wanna do four thirds divided by one fifth. Again, we need to have common denominators so that we are comparing like units and we can count in similar units. So the common denominator will be 15 and we will rewrite four thirds as 20 fifteenths and the one fifth we will write as three fifteenths. So the first thing we do is we depict 20 fifteenths so I'm gonna go ahead and draw two rectangular arrays. And however you want to depict these, you can. You might choose to reverse your rows and columns, not a problem. But we'll go ahead and we'll shade in 20 of these. So we shade in all 15 here. And then we will shade in another three here, but then just two here. Okay, so we're counting how many three fifteenths fit into here, and we know this is already divided into 15, so we're just counting in terms of threes. We fit one set of three fifteenths, a second set, a third set, a fourth set, a fifth set, a six set, and we can't fit anymore. We have two left over. Two out of what? Well, we're counting in terms of threes. So we have six and two thirds left over, and that is our answer. I hope that that clarified everything on the worksheet. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send me an email.